There is no resource more limited than time. As weebs, we should all know this. There is so much anime to watch, and yet so little time in the day. So when it comes to seasonal anime, we must be very selective and pick the ones that we will enjoy the most, so that we don't get stuck wasting our time on something that we're just going to drop after four weeks. And this season, I am watching a ton of seasonal anime. So much so, that I don't have any time to watch the anime that are rotting in my watch list. The reason why I'm watching so many? Well, that's because there are a lot of things I'm excited for this season. But there is one show. One that is leagues above the rest. One that wasn't on my radar at the start of the season at all. And it left me speechless after just 16 minutes. That anime is Oshinoko. So join me as I explain to you why you should watch this fantastic anime. Before we begin discussing the plot of the show, I just wanted to get one thing out of the way. This show is best experienced completely blind. However, I won't be going into any major spoilers in this video, so it'll be fine to watch this video and then watch the anime, but I still think you should watch the anime first. That being said, let's go in and start discussing the plot. Goro Amamiya is a doctor at a hospital in the middle of nowhere, but on top of that, he is a huge idol fan, which is not a very well-respected hobby for a man in his 20s to have. I don't know how that feels at all. His favorite idol is Ai Hoshino, the lead girl for the group B. Kamachi. He gained a love for this group because of an old patient of his, a sickly girl called Serena. Serena looked up to Ai, who was the same age as her. And Serena had a dream of becoming an idol, but tragically, due to her condition, she could hardly move, let alone dance. Serena passed, but Dr. Amamiya continued on, following Ai in Serena's place. But suddenly one day, Dr. Amamiya gets a new patient, a 16-year-old girl who is pregnant with twins. This patient is Ai Hoshino, the idol he adores so much. Can our protagonist do his job while also balancing his love for the girl he admires? Only time will tell. Oshinoko was created by mangaka Aka Akatsuka, and it began serialization in the most normal month ever conceived of April 2020. It's published in Shoeisha's Young Jump Plus and is still ongoing to this day. Now, if the name Aka Akatsuka doesn't sound familiar to you, maybe his previous work, Kaguya-sama Love is War, will. And you can definitely tell that these two have the same mangaka just by looking at the two anime side by side. You can especially tell when you look at the eyes of the characters compared to Love is War. I love the attention to detail that Akatsuka gives to eyes and how creepy he can make them. I love when he did it with Kaguya, and I love how he does it here. Another trope of Akatsuka's writing used in both shows is the effective use of narration. Now, in Love is War, the omniscient narrator is used to give context into the things that Miyuki and Kagi are battling over, be it where to go to vacation or when it is appropriate to text someone back. This brings a sort of weight to the scenarios, even if they're just mundane tasks. The narrator makes it seem like each thing is important. Well, unless you're watching the Kage-sama dub, in which case you're too busy laughing your ass off because Ian Sinclair is a national treasure. But that's a different show. On the other hand, Oshino Ko's narration is a little different than it is in Kaguya-san. Instead of using an omniscient narrator, the narration is pulled directly from the characters' heads. Sometimes it's pulled from eyes, but other times it's pulled from background characters. This is used to great effectiveness during one of the idol performances. During the performance, we get narration from multiple background characters so we can see what their thoughts are on the performance. This gives us an insight into idol culture as a whole, but Akatsuka can also make the points that he wants to make. So those are the direct comparisons that can be made between Love is War and Oshino Ko. But let's talk about something that's also consistent with Akatsuka's work, but is more specific to Oshino Ko, and that is the characters. I will be honest, Dr. Amamiya came off a little annoying at first. He is a bit creepy when you consider the fact that he is a man in his 20s who idolizes a young girl, let alone two, but this actually makes sense. See, idol fans are, well, idol fans are stereotypically known for their obsessiveness. So in a show that takes an objective approach to looking at idol culture, showing an idol otaku in a negative light makes sense. And that obsessive nature is injected into the core of the main character. 
Now, this isn't a positive trait, but might I remind you that being the protagonist doesn't automatically make you a good guy. It just means that you are the character that the story is about. Just look at examples like Masamune Kun's Revenge and Redo of Healer. Both of these main characters are driven and obsessed with revenge. Although, one is a mild asshole about it, and the other one is from Redo of Healer. My point is that Dr. Amamiya is a well-written character, but not a great person. Which is okay because, again, we aren't trying to show idol fans in a necessarily positive light. But I understand if some people don't like him. The other major character is, of course, the cover girl, Ai. Ai is an exceptional lead girl. Her optimism is very contagious, yet masks an interesting backstory that explains her character well. The overall theme of Oshinoko is lies, and Ai is a perfect example of that. She constantly puts on a facade of being the perfect cute idol, yet she struggles to love because of her upbringing. I'll stop there because now we are getting into spoiler territory, but all in all, she is the best character by far, and I hope she keeps her smile all the way to the end. This show is an idol anime, just like Love Live and its kin. But while Love Live romanticizes and celebrates being an idol, uh, Oshino Ko takes a much more harsh and pessimistic approach. I, for example, sees herself as a liar, which makes sense. If you didn't know, idols build a parasocial relationship with their fans, where their fans are led to believe that they are loved by and even have the potential to date the idols that they admire. So, for I to have children, it would be a career ender. But I, seeing herself as a liar, has no problem with continuing on for, with her career while having kids. And she presses on with a melancholic hope in the most stunning scene this season. I think this bleak but real look at being an idol is a really unique twist on the genre. But it is still an idol anime, so we get stunning musical numbers that are really well done and animated. And without any 3D. Looking at you, Love Live Sunshine. Speaking of music, how's the OP? It's phenomenal. Watch the show just for the opening if that's what it takes. How's the ED? Also amazing, this show don't miss. However, there is one big negative about this show. It's a high dive exclusive. And it's a little bit of a pain, especially since high dive requires you to have a subscription to watch anything. But it is totally worth it to watch this show. I love it to death, and it is potentially going to be my anime of the year. And in the words of I, lies are the most exquisite form of love. And with that, Sayonara.